Do you have items in your craft stash that are neglected and unused, but you can't bear to get rid of them? Welcome to Use It or Lose It, a weekly YouTube series where I'll dive into the products that you have lying around in your craft room and the products I have lying around in mine. After I've created something, I'll decide if I think I'll use it again or if it needs to give up that precious space in my stash, and I hope you'll play along. Hey guys, it's Jen. And Malia. And we are kicking off another Use It or Lose It episode. Today, guess what we're going to talk about? Frames. Malia and I just went through all of my stash and pulled out a billion frames. Not literally, but... Um, and we put them in categories because I wanted to show you kind of a bunch of different types of frames. Frames that you might have in your stash. And Several people have asked me to do an episode on frames, and so that's what we're going to do today. So up at the top, you can see I have all sorts of chipboard frames. Simple Stories had packages of frames like this. I don't know if they still do, um, but I found some at Tuesday morning and, and picked them up. And then this is an older package of Maggie Holmes frames, and this includes both chipboard... Um, actually, I think it's all chipboard. Yeah, all chipboard frames. There's different sizes, different shapes, there's glitter... Look, there's a circle one, super cute. So these are all chipboard. I thought the flower one went with the, cir I mean, the circles. No, well, these just are chipboard frames. And then I also have these pink Fresh Studio frames from Everyday Musings that were in my last month's hip kit. Um, so there's lots of different varieties of chipboard frames. They're still out there. Um, I'm sure that you have some in your stash. Uh, there are also just um, regular die cut frames. So here are some circular die cut frames that I had. And then these are, this is just a huge stack of other die cut frames. Maggie Holmes usually has a lot of frames in her um, collections. Pink Paisley usually has frames as well. Lots of companies have different kinds of frames. Um, I have some wood veneer frames. These are from Felicity Jane from older kits. These, um, well this one is from Pink Paisley. And then these frames. They're not actually wood. They're um, chipboard and they have a trim around them, but these are from Maggie Holmes, so you might have something like this in your stash as well. And then there are frames that are, uh, these are from Pink Fresh Studio, and they are kind of embellished. So you can see they have um, die cuts on them and some stitching, so they have a little bit something extra going on, which is really fun. And then um, there's also frames like this that might have little things going on in the corners. Uh, just a little bit something extra besides just a square frame like this These are some frames from pink fresh or pink pretty Little studio not pink fresh um, pretty little studio and they're not cut out in the center But I thought I would include these anyway just to show you that um, you can make these into a frame by cutting out the center and then I wanted to show you too a lot of frames and die cut packages come like stuck together so you just can pull them apart and you can use the pieces in between as additional frames. So you can use this little piece as a frame as well as, as the outer piece and the inner piece. So just wanted to quickly point that out. So these are a bunch of different kinds of frames. Of course, if you have a die or a stamp, you can use that too. Um, didn't I pull out a die, Mel? Um, nope. Yeah, I did. Oh. We also have, yep. <laughs> we also pulled out a bunch of chipboard um, and stickers that have frames in them. Malia pulled them out for me it, as well. So these are some puffy sticker frames. Look at this. They're just so many different frames um, in all of these different packages. That's a frame. That's a frame. Most of your chipboard sheets from Crate Paper have frames on them. You can see that one there. This is a frame here. That there. Sparkly frame. More frames here. So um, lots of different varieties of frames. And that wasn't one. I did have a die that has frames in it as well, but I don't know what I did with it. Um, there are also dies, of course, and some of you might have stamps that are frames too. So I just wanted to start this video by showing you a whole bunch of different kinds of frames. Malia and I both actually are going to do some layouts using frames and come back and talk to you about the layouts. And I have so many examples from past layouts as well that hopefully you'll get some great inspiration. So we will be back in just a second to show you what we've created, right Mel? Mm-hmm. Okay, see you in a minute. Hey it's Jen. Welcome to another episode of Use It or Lose It. Today we are going to talk about frames. Now I 
I'm excited to show you the layouts that we created. I know I filmed a little um, clip before this showing you what me and Malia were starting to do, my daughter and I. And so I want to show you the layout that she created first. Now this episode's a little bit different where I'm not going to do a process video, but I'm going to show you a bunch of layouts that I created, and then I'll also show you some past layouts. So I've created three new layouts for this video, and I'll talk about them in um, a little bit more detail. Amalia also created a layout, which I, again, wanted to show you first. So this is the layout that Malia created. And what I wanted to show you about this layout is the fact that she used frames to fill up the entire background. I think this is a really fun way to use frames. Just choose a whole bunch that kind of go together. She's kind of stuck with the blues uh, and greens here and then some neutrals. And then she just, she chose this photo of her and my two nieces at the aquarium. And then she kind of chose uh, embellishments that kind of coordinated with that. So what she decided to do within the frames is one of the frames houses a photo, one of them houses the journaling, and the rest of it's just embellishment. And I think that's a really fun way to use frames. So hopefully you get some inspiration from Malia's layout. So I thought I would jump in here and show you an example of a past layout I created using a similar technique. I used a bunch of fabric frames from Maggie Holmes, put them all around the layout, and then I used one for my photo, one for my title, a couple for my journaling, and then embellished the others. So I think that's a really fun way to use some frames. Now let me show you some of the layouts that I created. So in a similar fashion, I used frames here to create a sort of grid. And what I ended up doing was I had several photos of me acting a fool. Um, this is These are from Creativation in front of a little chalkboard wall that was there. And what I did was I took several frames that were different colors. They're mostly single colored frames, which was part of the the um, reason I decided to embellish the way that I did, but uh, what I did was I put my photos within these neutral frames, and then I used the other frames, which are a little bit smaller, well, some of them are smaller, and I just created a nice grid, and then I put one embellishment within each frame that color coordinated. And I think color coordinating is a really fun way to use frames. Um, to embellish within the frame in the same color that the frame is if you have some solid colored frames and this is a really condensed and concise way to use frames. I think sometimes it's tricky to decide what to to do with smaller frames because you think maybe this is too small for a photo but it's a good way to create a grid style layout and then house embellishments in the small frames. And if you didn't have photos that were small enough to fit into small frames like this, you could just use smaller square photos and not put them in a frame and still create a grid style layout with some smaller frames around it. So I just, what I again wanna point out about this is the fact that I kept um, all of the colored embellishment within the frames, and then the F, the rest of everything else is very neutral. So even this patterned paper that I included on the edges is neutral. The stamping and the um, title and journaling is neutral, and then around the photos is neutral. So I think that's a great way to incorporate it. So there's uh, one idea for using frames. So here's another example that's very similar to the one I just showed you, where I used frames and created kind of a loose grid. These frames were actually cut from a patterned paper, so you can see I put some photos in some of them, and then I backed others with patterned paper, added my journaling, my title. Um, I think this is a really, again, a great way to use frames to just house, it gives a little a home for all of your embellishment and all of your photos, so I love that. Here's another grid style layout using frames. Some of them have photos. One of them houses my title. Something I wanted to point out about this one is that you don't have to stay within the frame. You can see that word swing is kind of overlapping and there are embellishments going off the edges. So I really love using frames in a grid. Now this idea is another one that's I think pretty straightforward. This is just another style of grid, but the uh, photos are larger. And I think that this is a great way to house photos that are different from each other. So I have this habit of taking photos of the weather when it's nice outside or when I see something beautiful. These are all from different seasons and different um, types of 
I don't know, types of stuff that I just took photos of because I thought the day was beautiful. And so when I put the photos together, they didn't really feel like they belonged together, but by putting them in frames, it kind of helps to tie them together because the frames are the thing that's bringing them together. But the other thing is that the frames also separate the photos from each other. So the photos aren't right up next to each other. There's this bit of frame in between and that helps them to feel like they go together a little bit more, in my opinion. Um, and so again, I created a grid. So there's four photos. They're in a grid style. And then I also added this uh, die cut here. There are some die cuts here and I just added some um, embellishments around bringing in some blue because of the sky and some yellow. Just some nice uh, kind of earthy tones and I really like the way that this one turned out. So that's another way that you could use frames and I like the mixture of the um, the square frames with the circular frame. I think it looks really nice. Okay so the last uh, example that I created for this video is this one and this was a super fun one to create and a great way to use frames if you have a whole bunch of them. I used them as a border for my my layout so I chose a somewhat um, simple piece of pattern paper for the background just this lined paper this is actually an old scenic route paper scenic route however you want to say it um, so super super old from my stash but you could use plain cardstock too or whatever you want uh, and then I chose a bunch of frames most of these are from Maggie Holmes there's a few uh, from other companies um, as well in here but uh, I just embellished the entire outside edge I basically what I did was I inc I added these the top and side first and then I cut them all off and then I used the cutoff pieces to do the rest so that that helps there be continuity and it also helps there to be less waste so um, I was able to use two sides of each frame and there's still some little um, center bits that that did get discarded but you can kind of see here how it all kind of works together and I really love um, the way that they're all overlapping I feel like um, adding some beneath and above and at different uh, varying heights gives it a lot of interest and I really like that so um, this is just a layout about some mushrooms that <laughs> that I took a picture of um, my friend Inga and who you might know um, she always takes pictures of mushrooms she forages for them and um, it just it it makes her happy and it, that for some reason just connected with me and so anytime I see mushrooms it makes me think of her and how they make her happy and so I I sometimes take pictures of mushrooms as well so um, these aren't the kind you would eat of course but uh, anyway I wanted to document that story so just a very simple page, the frames around the outside, I think that's a really great way to use them. So these are the layouts that I created specifically for this uh, Use It or Lose It episode, but I have a bunch uh, that I've created in the past and I'm going to uh, go and talk through those with you now. So I wanted to start with the most obvious way, I guess, which is using a frame on top of a photo. So here I've highlighted a smaller photo on my layout with a sticker frame that I just put around my photo and that was an afterthought so you can add it afterwards to just kind of make it pop. You can see a little bit closer up here. I just wanted to bring a little bit more attention to it and that's a great way to do it. Both of your photos do not have to be framed. Here's a layout where I used the frame that doesn't fit the entire photo but it highlights the subject of the photo and I really love doing this. So the the frame doesn't cover the entire photo, just a portion of it. And that's a really great way to use a frame on a photo that's larger. Um, here's another example where I put the frame on top of the photo. This is a great way to use vellum frames because you can still see through it. And so you can still see, you can still see the details of the photo, uh, but you still get that kind of that pop there and the attention. Then another way that I really love using frames is to just house my journaling and I talked about that a little bit before but here's an example where you can see that I created a grid style layout and none of the photos are in frames but the journaling is and that creates that grid home for my journaling and I, I used a 3 by 4 card behind the frame and that helped me a little bit with my journaling as well. 
Here's another layout where I used the frame for my journaling. It's just uh, next to the photo and it's just that little that little square there and it worked perfectly. I added a few embellishments to it to kind of give it a little something extra, but that's just a sticker frame and adding your journaling inside a frame is a really, really simple way to use these. Another way that I love to use frames is in layers. So sometimes I'll cut a frame in half and layer it behind a photo, which is what I've done here with that green frame. You can see it on the right and the left there. And that's just a sticker that I cut in half and used as a layer. It's a great way to just add a little something behind your photos. Here's another area where I just added a frame for that pop of blue and it was an easy way to get that frame used up without using it as an actual frame. This is another example where I've used frames in my layers. I have it behind the top left and bottom right corners of this layout and you can see that the one in the top left, that's actually the inside of the frame that's in the bottom right. So sometimes those frames come layered together. Another way that I like to use frames this one uses it in a couple different ways, but one is around one of the photos, highlighting the photo, and then the other one is kind of within a grid or within a bunch of embellishments. And that's a great way to uh, add it into a layout. I love using a whole bunch of embellishments on one page. Here's another layout where the frames kind of play uh, a starring role here. I've got my photo and then I've got some frames layered underneath the photo and then some frames outside of the photo. So some of them have journaling, some of them have embellishment and some are in the layer. So that's kind of a combination. This next layout is also sort of a combination. My journaling or my title is kind of overlapping one of the frames and then the other frame overlaps the photo and has an embellishment inside. So that's another way to uh, kind of use them in your layers and also feature them on your layout. This next layout is one where I really featured the frames and I just lined them up next to the photo and put simple embellishments inside of them. You don't have to cover the whole page or even uh, use a ton of frames. You can just use a few to create a design element on your layout and I really love the way that this one looks. The next layout shows some acetate frames and they are creating a background on my layout. So I added some uh, mixed media I added some like watercolor behind the frames that matched them. And because they're acetate, they make a great base. And that's a, I know acetate can be tricky to use sometimes. So that's a good way to do that. Here's a uh, one where I lined the frames up. So you could do them in a straight line. This one kind of looks like a banner. I think a banner is a great way to use frames as well. You could um, even do two lines of frames um, and line them all up like this and create a banner across the entire uh, background of your layout, I think that would be a really fun way to use frames too. Here's a little bit of an outside the box idea, and this isn't exactly a frame, but I think that a great way to use a frame was would be to make a shaker pocket. Now this is some packaging that I used in the past uh, Use It or Lose It episode, but you could just put some acetate behind your frame and then um, add some glitter or some sequins or something behind it to make a shaker pocket. Here's an example of where sometimes we have frames that we don't know that we'll use. Maybe they don't have a pattern that we'll use on it. This frame around my photo is white and I stamped on top of it. So you could flip over one of the frames you don't think you'll use and stamp on it. That's a great way to get some use out of a frame that you don't know if you'll use that pattern. This last idea is one that I created um, for pink paisley and I used some wooden frames to create some place cards for Thanksgiving and so this is another great way to use especially those chipboard or wood frames to make place cards like this I think it would be really fun especially with those ones I showed at the beginning those Maggie Holmes ones with the pom-pom trim I think those would be great for placeholders too so I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will see you soon so will you take up the challenge? Join us on Facebook in the Crafty Use It or Lose It group and tag your photos on social media, hashtag Crafty Use It or Lose It. Can't wait to see what you create. So what do you have to use or lose? Leave a comment and you may see it in an upcoming episode. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future Use It or Lose It videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.